If you're an average player, you want to be left alone, right? Because you want to be able to slide by. If you're a good player, you want to be coached. If you're a great player, you want the coach to tell you the truth every day. Did I hustle on that play? Did I make the right read? Did I play the guy with the right leverage? You want to know every play. Because you know why? They want to be perfect. Everybody here makes a choice to do one of those three things. Welcome to the GOAT Consulting Podcast, a podcast dedicated to people striving to be a GOAT, the greatest of all time, serving it up in a way that you can get it in all stages of life. Hey, I'm Colby Jubenville, and welcome to another episode of the GOAT Consulting Podcast right here in Pod Studio One. To the right, always at the table, the CEO of the GOAT family of brands, GOAT Turf, GOAT Sports, GOAT Imprints, and who knows what's next. My good friend, Mr. Tyler Burnett. Tyler, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. I'm glad you are here. Sir. And then the calming force in the shirt that says we're all in this together from Brentwood, Tennessee, my good friend, Mr. John Byers. John, got it. Nailed thanks. it. Yeah, thanks for being here. We got a good show for you today. Y- you know, from the start, we always said we wanted to put something together that served it up in a way that people could get it. Mm-hmm. And, and much like that bottle of syrup that ended up here from Waffle House, that's what we try to do each week is serve it up in a way that you can get it. And the other thing is if you look around this table, you'll see that you got a 20, you got your 20s, you got your 30s, you got your 40s. Well, we're all 20 once. We got our 30s, our 40s, and our 50s. Yep. The 30-year-old perspective. In our 30s, they teach us to move up in the game. In our 40s, we try to stay in the game because those 30-year-olds are so, so good. good. In our 50s, what the research says, we finally ask ourselves, what is it that I really want? And so each week we try to bring one idea, one topic, focused on the idea around the goat the greatest of all time the greatest of all time which is is part of your vision for the future absolutely you know i was talking to somebody here recently and uh they emailed me and they said hey i've seen this goat consulting podcast and i'm not sure i understand it and i never thought about this but y- you know like in the in football when the kicker kicks and misses it are you the hero or the goat have you heard that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so Coach, Coach Pete's saying right there. Okay, so they didn't they didn't understand that, and I didn't think through that. And so it's always important, I think, for us to say, what is a goat? Sure. What is a goat? And, and a goat in sports, as we know, or entertainment, is somebody that's recognized for their performance, but at the same time elevates other people around them. The whole team. The whole team. Or beyond. And, or beyond. And, and then in business – It's people that compete on unique perspective, how they see what they do, unique education, how they know what they do, and unique experience, how they deliver what they do. Mm. And so if our 50s, we say, this is what I really want, and then we go and get it and do it, this is 25 minutes around that idea. Being clear about what you want, going and getting and doing it, and then taking little pieces of information, what I call snackable size Mm -hmm. information, that's served up in a way for you to get it. That was clear. Thank you. I'm getting clear. Well, thank you for your coaching. I'm going to share my goat. I'm just I'm excited <clears throat> to share. Well, before we do that, let's talk about the topic. The topic for today okay. is confidence. What is it? We're going to talk about that. What is confidence? How do you define it? What happens when you're standing at the plate and you lose it? Mm-hmm. Which is why I didn't play baseball. And then how do you get it back? So that's what we're talking about today. Confidence. Confidence. I like it. And so... It, let, let's go around and let's just talk about if you if you're ready to share your goat. I'm excited about this one. L- let's talk about the the perspective of the goat and confidence. Go ahead, because a goat has to have confidence, right? He has to. Or she. It, or it. <laughs> or it. I've got an it goat for okay. our next episode. So tune in. Tell your friends. Yeah. Tell your lovers. <laughs> tell everybody. Uh, we're in it together. We're in this thing together. So. He was actually in the news this last weekend, maybe even more so his wife, but one of the goats, Joe Montana, right? <laughs> Greatest of all time. Yeah. Super Bowl champ, Super Bowl MVP. His wife, I don't know if you read this weekend, no. there was an intruder that came into their house, tried to take the grandbaby, their grandbaby from their house. Lock your doors. And Miss Montana shut it down. She did. Wow, did she, she what, did, did she pull a gun or what? No, she, she called an audible. I think she <laughs> called an audible. I love it. I'd like to say she tackled him, but I don't she did. I don't know if that's well as the news per, as the reporter said, she pulled the baby away from the intruder. Wow. I love that. Yeah. 
So he was looking for Dwight Clark. He was one of one of my favorite stories of all of all time, and it just so happens to be with Joe Montana. I think this is a great description of what you just shared around confidence. Yeah, is Super Bowl twenty three, nineteen eighty nine. The year I was born. born. I was eight years old. I was born. What a good year. Games on the line. <clears throat> Montana and his team, the 49ers, are down. They're on their own, in their own uh, red zone. I don't know, two, three yard, three yard line. Yeah. And there's less than a minute in the game to go. They're down. And he huddles his team together, calls, about to call the play that's going to get them in the end zone. And he overlooks his linemen and he, they're all like, what's he looking at? Mm-hmm. And he says, is that John Candy over there? <laughs> I'm not I'm not a man that knows what it's be like, to be like in that kind of situation, but I'm guessing the linemen and the team didn't think that's what was going to come out of his mouth. Yeah. And, but the poise that he showed, the belief in himself, and one of my definitions is just uh, knowing you have an ability to choose, to choose in that moment. To just let everybody know, look, we got this. Yeah. Look, it's John Candy. He turned around. He engineers one of the greatest drives in all of NFL history. They win the Super Bowl, MVP yeah. champ. I mean, the ability to stay calm, cool, and collected in a situation that is what you work for the whole offseason, the whole season. Mm-hmm. You're down to the last minute and to stay calm and cool and collected. Not Beautiful. only stay yourself, but keep the keep the whole team that way. Beautiful. And to, to where he just makes it – just a regular play, guys. Let's so go. Can you imagine yeah. every single play of that drive, how the confidence built? Mm. Every single play. And, and you can see it. You can see it. Yeah. You know, if you're watching a game, you can see. You know, that first that, – like you said, the first few plays, if it's third down and nine and you get a first down, you then you see the confidence. You see the energy level it's changing. It's yeah. Joe Cool. They call him Joe Cool for they a did. reason. And he, and he probably did it for that reason. But, you know, I like what you talked about, you know, for that moment and in that play – and, and the reason that you can do that is you prepare Absolutely. all off season, and and that certainly is part of it. You know, when I think about my goat, um, I think about uh, Danny Larusso. Do you know who that is? Um, is it Tony Larusso's? <laughs> Tony Larusso's son. <laughs> Danny Larusso, the Karate Kid. Yes. Who now owns Larusso Motors? He does. So Have cheesy. you watched this? So cheap. I tried. I just it's so I good. struggled. So here's what I'm thinking. Cobra Kai. <laughs> Cobra Kai. Yeah. Right here. Uh-oh. I don't even know what that is. Day LaRusso. Oh. Right here. Me and you, LaRusso's dojo. Okay. Cobra Kai. I could see that. Right here. No mercy from no this No mercy. Guy. But the, the reason, no mercy right here. <laughs> the reason that I say that is. That's kind of how we are in our 20s though, right? I mean, no mercy. <laughs> no That's, mercy. Hey, I get, I'm 31 I, here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're already, still transitioning. I've, been, I've been called 20 twice already today, and I'm not but, sure how yeah, I feel about it. Well, I feel good about it. But he is no mercy, and he needs to watch Cobra Kai. Have, Carl, have Love you it. watched Cobra Kai? Not yet, but it's in our future. Good, good. I, I was hooked. I watched it in three days. Uh, I'm a huge Karate Kid fan, but because to me, LaRusso uh, epitomizes what confidence is. He is a goat. Th- sure. Think yeah. about this. He asked Miyagi. Miyagi says, paint the fence. Try something new. That's part of the definition of confidence. Asking for help, building trusting relationships, being open to feedback, and trying new things. Those are all things that LaRusso did with Miyagi. So one of the questions that you asked, too, while we're on Karate Kid, because great, great goat. Well done. Thank you. I knew you'd like it. One of the questions you ask is, how do we get it? Right, and I love one of my favorite lines of all time, any movie, and the the idea of Larusso and all and all. I'm, I'm a firm believer. I've got three boys at home. All men are looking for somebody to help them answer the question: Do I have what it takes? Mm-hmm. And in my definition of confidence, we get it from experience and community, which is also how we lose it. Experience and community. Explain that. Well, think about Miyagi. Right. Or think about LaRusso. I mean, he leading up to the very last scene is not doing well. His confidence is really low. Mm. He's not even he doesn't even think he, he they've already called it. Yeah. Right. And he's in the room and he asked Miyagi, do you think I could have won? Yeah. 
And he, he looks into him and he leans into him and he says, yes, Danielson. <laughs> right? <laughs> totally builds the cop, but it's his Give experience and his community. It's beautiful. And, and it's one of the few things in life. The calming force. That the, the two things that build it are also the two things that can take it away. What, what great perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you probably, whether you wanted to or not, have spent, Tyler, spent time dealing with confidence because you, you played the sport to me that takes the most confidence, probably the reason I didn't play the sport because I didn't uh, have confidence mm-hmm. back in those days. But the sport of baseball, it's it's you versus another person mm-hmm. that's throwing a ball at you that's probably going close to 100 miles an hour. Hardest thing to do in sports, hit a baseball. Yeah. I, they give you a round ball and a round bat and tell you to hit it square. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, square it up. And you, loved, and you loved it. For some reason, I did. Uh, it's definitely a, a test of being able to deal with adversity, which takes confidence. Uh, but the crazy thing about the game is that you can do so well and go 0 for 4. Mm-hmm. You can hit four line shots right at people and be yeah. 0 for 4. And then you can hit four balls terrible and go 4 for 4. Yeah. And then have to forget it the yeah. next time because it's the experience yep. that builds or erodes. Hundred percent. Do you think of a? Can you think of a time in, in your playing experience, either college or pro, where where you lost it? And, oh, absolutely. And, and you were able to get it back. And how did you get it back? Through ex- through experience mm. and through just you know grinding it out, extra time, pregame, postgame, preparation. Um, yeah, we we played down at FIU my sophomore year, and I think for the weekend I went like eleven for thirteen, wow. three home runs, probably four doubles. Builder. Incredible, incredible confidence. Uh, at the time, I was hitting just over 400, leading the country in doubles, and uh, took Monday off. Tuesday, we get to the park, and I felt like I'd never played before. Mm. Like it just was the craziest experience that I can remember, and I just felt like I, I couldn't get my feet right, I couldn't get my hands right, I couldn't swinging and missing at balls that are like this guy's throwing 86. How am I swinging and missing at this? And yeah. uh, just really, really struggling and. You know, at the time, Bryce Brantz was slotted to go first-round draft pick. So we had tons of scouts in. And uh, just losing that that confidence and then having to, you know, just stop and say, I got to put this behind me. I got to move forward. Like, it's new day. Like, you let's, have a let's short get memory. You, you in vary. sports and business. Yeah. Everything. You got to have a short memory yeah. with success or failure. Did uh, – I know you had a special relationship with Coach Pete. Absolutely. Did he, he is definitely my goat for – for this and uh, one of the best things he did for me, um, I, I was struggling at one, another point in my three years at MTSU, and I hit leadoff. And uh, I remember us being at Troy, and I walked to Coach Pete. We would always get ready and stuff, and he would post a roster, uh, post a lineup. He had a lineup sheet that he printed out, and so you know I went to just double check that I was playing shortstop and hitting first, and <laughs> I went to it. And I did a double take, and I wasn't hitting leadoff. And I didn't look at the rest of the lineup card. I just looked at the leadoff spot. And I walked around and kind of sat on the bench, and Coach Pete walked over to me. (laughs) Did you check the whole lineup? I said, what are you talking about? He said, did you you check the whole lineup? I said, well, no. He goes, well, you might want to check it. So I go back up to the lineup. You don't know Coach Pete. I don't. Dude. That's kind of oh, how he talks. Say, yeah, it's the beautiful. World, the world needs to know Coach Oh, oh God. It's wish, beautiful. I wish they could. They, they um, don't make them like So I go up there and I'm hitting cleanup. And this is in the middle of like the most struggle that I've ever faced in college. And so you can't make this story up. And this is why this man is the GOAT. So uh, long story short, uh, he, he opens up his briefcase and he has a pen and he rolls my sleeve up. And he said, I'm going to draw a tattoo on your arm. You're going to get nasty today. So you can't make this up either, okay? Great. That's a great So dude. it's the top of the first inning. First guy hits a single. Next guy walks. Next guy hits a single, and we hold him up on third. So I'm going up my first at bat as a cleanup hitter. The bases are loaded. So I start to walk to the plate, and Pete grabs me. Now, don't forget, you're a cleanup hitter. Don't so, forget. Thanks. So, so I get ahead 2-0. Yeah. And I hit a grand slam. Of course. Wow. And I was struggling bad. <laughs> yeah. And so all I can remember is is going around the bases and then seeing Pete just inside the dugout with his legendary clap like this. God, that's beautiful. Says, that's my cleanup hitter. <laughs> 
so you that's know, the com- his, that's the community, right? Well, the, like, you know, that's he the was community. Your Miyagi. The the confidence he had in me that yeah. I didn't have in myself, yeah, and that he showed it in me yeah. and stayed poised in a situation. I mean, you how much better? Know, how much do better? I have what it takes? And he said. Yes. yes. And it, how much better can you draw it up to put me in the cleanup spot and for mm, me to go up first A B yeah, when awesome. I'm struggling like crazy and get the story, bases right? loaded? It's almost like he made it happen. Well, he did make we it happen. We used to call him little baby Jesus, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it would be pissing rain at 1 o'clock. The radar would be red. And at 2.30, the sun would just <laughs> and open. And you have to practice. And we would have to practice. That's a great story. So we would say he had a little red phone in his office. And, uh, <laughs> and little baby Jesus would make, make he a made the call. call. He made the call. You miss those days, don't you? Yeah, you I miss having those people in your life. Oh, yeah. Coaches do that. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you, you laugh a little bit or, you, or you, you jest that, you know, it's almost like he made it happen. He did make mm-hmm. it happen. He did. And, and one of the things, one of the questions that we ask is if you lose it, if you lose confidence – how do you get it back? Mm. And I firmly believe you get it back to the relationship that yeah. you have with others. Yeah, and you had you a special relationship with him to the point where he knew exactly how to move you from where you were to where you needed to be. Yeah. And, and this is a coaching term but that you're referencing, but from a manager standpoint, one of the things my dad always taught me when I was coming up as a, a manager or a business owner is a good manager – can fire, hire, and fire. A great manager can turn people around. And mm-hmm. I think that's what Pete did as a great coach for me is he could take that person and instead of shutting them down or just not putting them back in the lineup, he could figure out how to turn it around yeah. like that. And I think that's the difference in a, in a person that's good and great. Let's yeah. let's point out, though, what he just said because I think you you passed over us. I don't even know that you realized what you just said because – We're together, baby. This is, this is really powerful, so don't miss this. You said a, a good – manager can hire and fire but then you said a great manager can turn people around and that's what pete did is that he coached me i might even challenge that what you said and say because you didn't say pete managed to turn me around he coached me he led me through that right yeah Yeah. like that's a big difference because i firmly believe we we manage things businesses checkbooks whatever if that's a thing anymore and we lead people yeah, it's and not. You didn't use manage when you talked about Pete. Yeah. You used coach. Yeah. He was a leader, right? Like yeah. that's a big difference. Yes. And I don't think we can miss that. Trusting relationships. Yeah. Getting feedback. That yeah. was Pete's way of giving you feedback. Absolutely. He, he saw it. He saw the ability that he couldn't say for himself. One of the things that I firmly believe is a great coach has the ability to affirm and validate the worth and potential in other people in such a clear way that they can see it for themselves. Mm. And that's what you needed at that moment. And so yeah. I think if, if you're asking yourself right now as you're listening to this podcast, if you're asking yourself, if, if your confidence is low, where do you get it? You, you get it from the trusting relationships that you have. Community. That, community. Community. Yeah. I think about, you know, coaches, all oh, of us. Boy. Had please, coaches please tell that it. impacted us, and and um, and I was fortunate enough to play for. I won't do his voice because I don't think I can really do it anymore. Not as good as what you just did, Pete. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have a good Friday and a good rest of the weekend just laughing and thinking about that. You've told me that story before, which is what I was hoping you were gonna do, and it was fantastic. Beautiful. But I had the opportunity to play for a guy. Uh, Tommy Raniger that uh, played at Mississippi State in the 1960s, I believe, and I'm pretty sure that they didn't wear helmets when <laughs> when, when he did play. But uh, this this guy uh, w- was the definition of old school and um, and was hard on everybody. And I, I wrote a, a book, and in the last chapter of the book, I called it Battle Testing. And what he did and the reason that we won the games that we won is that he knew that if he could push you to a certain limit and you wouldn't break, then when you went out into the game mm. and got to that limit, then you wouldn't break. And he called it he called it battle testing. We called it battle testing. And so uh, we lost to Swanee up on the mountain one year. And and what I love about Coach Raniger is my name's Colby, <laughs> as you both know, <laughs> and hopefully the audience knows now. And uh, he didn't not to call him something different. Yeah, folks. yeah. He didn't think that that was that was a name that. Uh, a a man should have, and so he said, "From now that's a on, confidence I'm gonna call, yeah, oh yeah." He said, "I'm going to call you Corey," and so that's what he called me for four years. It was either "Hey you" or "Corey," or or yeah, "Hey you" or "Corey." It's pretty much Corey, 
And so, and my son Max, who's ten, <laughs> refers to you as Corey. Still, Corey, yeah. I, I spoke yesterday to a home builders association. I told that story, and and some guys sent me an email that said, "Hey, Corey." So we're up on the mountain and we're playing, and um, we lose that game. And he gets the whole team together, and he always pointed like this, mm-hmm. never like this. It was always, and he go back and forth, and I wouldn't look at him. I was afraid of it. <laughs> yeah. I just looked down. And he said, boys, y'all know why we lost the game today? Stop it. You need to do it in his voice. Don't. don't I, no, I can't. Not. I'll try. Yes. It, it, no, I can't do it. And so he said, you know, y'all know why we lost the game today? He said, because Corey don't know how to play defensive tackle. So if you see him, tell him, Corey, you lost the game for us today. So I'm literally <laughs> from here to Carl, and I'm looking at him, and I can still smell the bus fumes. And I go walking up to the bus with my little Walkman and my Better Than Ezra of course. to listen as we go down the mountain. And Flint Minshew, who's Gardner Minshew's son that plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars, he was the other defensive tackle, and he's real bucolic and country. And he says, Kobe, Coach Raniger only picks on people he likes. In hell, he must love you. <laughs> It's a defining moment. It's beautiful. And you know what? I got in that bus, and there was dip spit and sardine cans going back and forth as we went up and down the mountains. And I said to myself, if I can make it through this, I can make it through anything. And really what he taught us that I think is a powerful takeaway for the audience that I know that you know from your your playing experience at both college and pro, and I know that you know from, from your triathlete experience and the training that you do, is that you develop a mindset where you learn how to use adversity to accelerate growth. Yeah. And so if you're asking yourself, if I don't have the relationships and I haven't built those trusting relationships, then where do I turn to next? I think the next place that you turn to is developing a mindset that says, this is adversity Mm -hmm. that I'm going to use to accelerate growth. Meaning I'm not going to run from the adversity. I'm going to turn into it. Lean into it. And take it. With courage. Yeah. We don't have time for me to tell the sink or swim story, so folks, you'll have to tune in because that was my story. But I will tell you, this is what, this on a, on a funnier note, this is what confidence is to me. I, and, and one of the beautiful things about working remote these days, uh, I come up yesterday, quick break in between calls from the basement, and I see our two-year-old daughter in the living room watching TV and nothing but socks. <laughs> the joy of children. She was completely confident in her decision <laughs> yeah. to do that, right? Yeah. She wanted to watch TV in just her socks. Yeah. And I thought, that's confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And somewhere along the way, we lose it. And you know what I thought of as you were just sharing that moment? That was a complete side note, but I felt like it was important yeah, to yeah. share. I like it. Get a little peek we're, into my we're a, window. We're a total, we're a total, uh, podcast operation here for me sometimes it i may lack the confidence until the action starts and some at one point in my life i felt like whether whether you call it motivation or whatever like i feel like i need to have that first before i can go do and one of the things i've learned about myself in my 30s probably at that inflection jerry Maguire moment at Mm -hmm. 35 right where it's like the action is what brings my heart along or my confidence along. I like that. As opposed to the other way around. Well, you know, it, it's just like that, that first hit in football. Uh, I questioned every decision that I made until I made that first hit against the other team. Mm. And, and when I did, that action is what pushed me to confidently yep. uh, move forward. Um, you know, We'll leave it here for today. When I think about a confidence, I think about Thoreau and what he talks about confidence and, and what he talks about success. He said that success is about advancing confidently in the direction of your own dream and to endeavor to live a life that only you can imagine. And I think goats do that, right? Mm, yeah. You walked away from everything that you had in every estimation of people sitting around you, you had it made and you chose to risk it all. Mm-hmm. Every career move that you've made, you've asked yourself, what is it that I really want? And, and what we're trying to do here with this podcast is take one idea, package it up, serve it up like Waffle House, and deliver it in a way that people can get it. Yep. Right? 
And not in like a weird, we've got it all figured out kind of way. It's well, I like, think they've definitely all, figured that out. It's like, we're in this together, yeah. and it's all messy, <laughs> and we're just going to share the story together, right? It, it is messy. It is messy. Life in, in post-COVID world is messy. Yeah. And, and this podcast hopefully will shine a light on, on what we think is the good stuff. 20s, they teach us to get in. 30s, they teach us to move up. 40s, we try to stay in. 50s, we say, what is it that I really want? One of the things that we know is that confidence is a part of that. We appreciate you being with us in studio today. As always, for Tyler and John, I'm Colby Jubinville, and this is the Go Consulting Podcast. <laughs>